working in a T shape up the middle and across the ball of the foot. Next movement is massaging over the Achilles tendon. And then cupping the heel and just massaging over the heel there. Continue with your effleurage over the foot, about six times, and then finish with effleurage of the whole leg and foot, six times. And come off with your hands together. Okay. So you've finished your pedicure, you're going to paint. Always when you do pedicures, um, when they book in, try and check that they bring in flip-flops, especially in the winter, um, because not everyone wears them in the winter. So it's one good thing to remember with your bookings. Um, before you paint, you need to squeak the nails to get rid of any excess cream. And make sure you thoroughly squeak them because if there is any cream left on, it's going to make your polish look quite mottled. It won't um, set very nicely. So we just clean around the toes. And do the same to the other one so you know you've done both because you might forget. So let's have the other one up. Place that foot down for me. Okay. Now you can use toe dividers um, or you can use tissue or in some cases you may not need any dividers if the clients have got quite good um, separation between their toes. I like to, as a rule, um, use tissues because I feel that they're a little bit more hygienic. And sometimes toe dividers can be a little bit uncomfortable as well. Separate the toes. Apply your base coat. Now the technique of painting, ideally to get a straight line, is to go across the nail and down so that you get a nice neat line. And I'll show you that properly with colour. With the smaller toes, it's very difficult to do that movement, so you've just got to work to get in a nice neat line running across the top. So I've just got to fussy me. Get that off. Okay, place that foot down, gives it time to dry whilst you put your toe divider or tissue between the other toes. Remember you've got to have your polish in your hands when you're doing your painting. Keeps it warm and it's close to you then. And just cap across the tips of the toenails as you go along as well as a course of habit because it helps seal in the polish. Can you place that foot down for me? Now, Kerry's chosen her colour at the beginning in the consultation. So this is the one Kerry's chosen. Nice bright red. 
Warm your polishes by rolling them in your hands. Don't shake them up and down. As you can see, you're aiming to get a nice neat line across the top there. If you do get any going underneath, especially with toenails because they're a bit shorter, just have an orange stick to hand just to wipe it before it dries. Or you can use a bit of nail varnish remover. So you're going to apply two coats of this colour. Ideally, what you want when your clients return to you in sort of three to four weeks is just a gap around the cuticle line. And if you've done your polishing correctly and you've applied it well, and you've used the methods that I've shown you, you should only have that and no chipping. So just remember as you go along, cap across the free edge. Sometimes you haven't got much of a to little toenail to paint, but do put a little bit on there, otherwise it just looks a bit uneven. Take those out now. Now it takes about 20 minutes to be touch dry. But you can't guarantee they're not going to knock their toes. So just, you know, make sure they're dry. Perhaps use a quick dry to help speed it along. And obviously with them wearing flip-flops does help. There is a little trick I learned in the industry where if it's touch dry after 20 minutes, you can put a bit of clean film over the toes and put their socks on. It does help prevent them from denting. Okay, place that one down. And repeat with your second coat. Now once you've got your neat line around your toenail, you can just do your regular three strokes down for your second coat, because you can follow that line that you've created already. I'm still capping those ends as I go along. Just quickly to tidy up some flex. Take the orange root stick, drop your lid on the floor, and just tidy up. Set foot down, and we'll do the second coat on this foot.
Remember as well, with your bottles, when you're finished and when you tidy up, make sure you wipe around the edges with nail varnish remover and cotton wool because if you leave it to get clogged up, um, it would end up making the nail varnish go stale a lot quicker and they don't last very long. So I'm just tidying around the edges on this one and then we're going to put the top coat on. Very fussy. Okay. And then give it a few minutes just to let that dry because if you go and put your top coat on straight away, you could pull and smudge the polish and then it's ruined all your work. If your client ever does smudge the nails before you leave, another trick of the trade um, is you can actually get a little bit of nail varnish remover on your finger and just massage it into the dent and then paint over it and that saves you having to take the whole thing off again. I've had to do that a few times. Okay. Apply your top coat over the nails and the top coat is going to help keep the longevity of the nails and also give it a nice shine especially if you paint it with more of a matte polish cap the ends like you have done with all the other coats and also the client can then use top coat themselves you can recommend them your top coat um, to use every couple of days and that will keep the shine in the nails so when it starts to get a bit dull if they put a bit of top coat on it will freshen them up again and make them look just as new so that could be part of your home care advice. If you do get any polish on your brush, just wipe it over with a tissue or something just to, um, before you put it back in the bottle. Otherwise, you're going to obviously cause your top coat to be discoloured. You don't need to press hard when you put your top coat on, so you won't be dragging if it's slightly tacky. And just leave the dividers in just for a little bit longer while it's drying. And while it's drying, you can be then going through your home care advice, products and consumables that you've used. Um, if you've identified that they've got quite a lot of hard skin, then you'd recommend them to use a foot cream or a foot rasp um, at home maybe a couple of times a week. Um, even if they've got a bowl, they could soak their feet. Um, people are more inclined to do more with their feet in the winter than the summer, uh, in the summer rather than the winter, sorry. But it's good to advise and just to recommend. And then obviously let them know when they're next having their, need their next pedicure. So depending on their needs, it's normally once every three to four weeks. Um, if it's just a regular, just to look after their feet. And that's it. <laughs>